Brought to you by Lagless GG. Get 35% off your first purchase by using code SignusMC or click the link below. Throughout my time testing a bunch of hosts, I've made a few discoveries. One of the most glaring ones was how similar most hosts feel to use. It's almost like they all use the same panel. Well, it's because they are. They are all using specifically Pterodactyl, or at least most are. Most hosts either fork it like Pyro and the Pyrodactyl, or create a theme like Wise Host, or even my sponsor Lagless.gg does. With plugins, a modern Docker-based system, and one hell of an install guide, is it any wonder that Pterodactyl took over the hosting scene by storm, and by extension has created a new golden age of summer and scam host. So today, let me blow your mind, as once you see that everybody basically uses the same structure panel, you will never be able to unsee it ever again. Let us today dive into the history of the biggest revolution in hosting Minecraft servers and game hosts alike. Let's talk about Pterodactyl. First, a little bit of background information. When Minecraft servers were coming out, with HMOD and Bucket becoming more and more important, we kind of needed a way for people to manage their plugins on the server, and so the server wrapper was invented. These are software that doesn't really modify the Minecraft server jar that much, but instead it reads out what it outputs in its logs and can issue comments onto the server like slash op or slash kick. This eventually evolved into the panels we know today, where you can just drag a file from a website and it automatically gets uploaded to the node. But before we all had that kind of stuff, we had stuff like PHP My Admin, AdminCraft, MC Searville, and many, many more. There's a link to a wiki page at the bottom of the description if you're really interested, and while you're down there, why don't you give me a sub and a like? Maybe even comment what wrapper you used. Hey, post editing lunar here. I just wanted to issue a correction. It's not entirely accurate to say that wrappers evolved into panels. They actually didn't. Uh, a wrapper is something like buckets and stuff. They were more likely a way of adding essential like commands before essential happened. The panels kind of evolved from a rudimentary API to some way of interacting with your server software from remote locations or even just ease of access, that kind of stuff. So that that's a small little thingy-majiggy I wanted to clear up before anyone got the wrong idea. Apologies for the correction, enjoy the video. In my case, however, I used Multicraft, which allowed you to, instead of managing one server at one time, link multiple servers or nodes together to the same panel and that will be all managed from that single point. Fun fact, by the way, I believe Apex Hosting is still using it as it has the same basic file browser and the same console, which is funny when you know that this software has been left behind by all other hosts. But I digress. While Multicraft wasn't the first one to do any of this, it did take over the hosting scene for a good long while. But there was one small issue. It was a paid and closed source program, paying almost a euro and a half per game server, and for years, this was kind of the norm. Everybody did this, with most hosts who didn't invest in their own panels or backends eventually switching over to Multicraft and paying sometimes exuberant prices. Prices that would be eventually downcharged to the consumer. That would all change when our topic of today entered the scene in 2016 and created by Dan Everett in 2015 to a lukewarm reception, and then later maintained by Matthew as they left, Pterodactyl. Bit of trivia most people don't know is that Pterodactyl was first intended to be the rewrite of another panel known as Puffer Panel, which was also an open source panel. It eventually grew to overtake Multicraft due to its open source nature and much, much more modern infrastructure using the Docker platform. But you've heard that it's a Docker panel or a Docker platform based program over and over and over again. But what does that mean? We'll have a look, shall we? In computing, and especially in servers, there is a thing called a Type 1 hypervisor. There's another type, but it's not relevant. This is where you split your computer up using a software like VMware or Proxmox using its own operating system. These then split up your computers in little splinters that we call virtual machines or VMs. It has its own resources, which are set by the hypervisor on boot, and thus cannot be changed while it's running. Docker, however, is an entirely different beast. For instance, what we would call a VM is instead called a container. It works with the host itself and can expand its resources on the fly or dynamically as needed. Need more CPU power on the fly? In a VM, you would need to shut it down 
increases the CPU allocation, and then just boot it up again. With Docker, you just give it some more. Done. This coupled with its lightning fast boot up time compared to a VM as it doesn't need to load the entire operating system all the time and the lightweight nature of these containers meant that it's a great fit for Pterodactyl's use case. And with its first attempt, Demon, Yes, like you spell it in 4 Hammer 40K, which was later rewritten in Wings, being the powerhouse of the cell, I mean, panel. See, when you install Pterodactyl, you quickly realize you're actually installing two different softwares. The panel and the demon, Wings. The panel is what you see when, well, you're using a host, like Lagless or any other host. And logically, is the main way of interacting with your server or container. And does this seem familiar to you? It should. But for this learning part, we're going to focus on Wings. See, Wings is the backbone behind all of this and allocates, stores, and runs your servers. The basic structure is actually quite simple. Your server, like your actual hardware, runs a Linux installation with Wings installed. This is, from now on, called the node and forms a connection to your panel so it can talk to each other. Wings then containerizes different game servers in different containers, mostly independent from each other. These servers are a creation from a combination of something called an egg and a yolk. The egg houses the actual game jar like paper, bedrock, modded versions of Minecraft and the configs needed to start it up like the port number assigned to the docker and other stuff. The yolk holds the so-called container image. In this case of Minecraft, it is Java. For example, for earlier Minecraft versions, you would select Java 8, while on newer versions, you can select the Yolk for Java 21. This all combined can still be automated further by Pterodactyl itself or using software like WHMCS, which is a billing software which automatically creates a server upon sale, sends you an email and logging details. This all combined creates an easy to use and very powerful software. But of course, with great power comes great responsibility. And with that line, I think we should move on to the next part of this video, the issues with Pterodactyl. Pterodactyl C isn't really a stranger to security issues, with several people and myself joking every time that it happens as the monthly mandated security issue. But again, thanks to it being open source, and like I mentioned in my previous video, so many people using it, it usually gets reported lightningly fast. With the latest one I know of is an issue with Winx, and it's actually found by Blasto over at Lagless GG themselves. It even had a vulnerability at one point, which needed a full rewrite of Wings in 2024, which was a critical security vulnerability. On top of that, it is pretty hard to install. And before you comment, no, a script isn't going to make it easier. Most of the time that I was in the Pterodactyl Discord helping people out because I was bored, it was either because they left the test agent of Wings running and thus port 8080 wasn't used, or they used the script not knowing what they were doing. Scripts are also not supported in the Pterodactyl Discord. The second you mention that you have used the script and does not know what you did, support ends. Because if you don't know what you did, they don't know what you did either. And the third issue I see here is that it's locked to Linux. Thus already has an extra barrier of entry, unlike others like Crafty Controller, which also is a whole lot easier to install. However, that's not my biggest issue here. None of this are. My biggest issue here is the fact that it's being misused by countless of summer hosts who pirate the billing software and then use something like AWS credits or free server somewhere else to keep a scam running where any second it can all just collapse into itself because little Timmy's dad stopped paying. Because yes, this is still powerful software, but don't forget at the end of the day, you're still handling people's data like phone numbers because WHCMS asks your phone number, your address, your legal name, everything, your email. It's really risky. You need to make sure that your data is secure. So, little Timmy, if you think that hosting is an easy money maker, it is not. If you don't know what you are doing, you are being a danger for the people you are trying to help. But anyways, let's get to some sort of a conclusion here. Some of you might be wondering, why did I make this video? Well, because it's important that people know that the panel isn't the reason to stay with the host. Unless you're shocked by the moderant, or more fairly Pyro, who created their own panel. Most just use Pterodactyl with a custom panel, and that's fine. That's totally fine. But don't 
feel the need to stay with a certain host because their panel looks nice. Most other hosts use the same thing. The main goal of this video is also to get you to try out Pterodactyl for yourself and try seeing what you can do with this panel. For example, Emma over at Blueprint made a kind of extension for Pterodactyl that allows you to download stuff like panel themes, a mod MC downloader, all that kind of stuff and much more. It is a versatile and powerful software with thousands of people creating stuff for it and millions of users using it every day without complaint. With that being said though, I was Lunar, you are very awesome, and I will see you in the next time. Bye bye. If you would like to support what I do and uh, help out the channel, either go over to Lagless, buy a server so you get something out of it, or pay me one buck a month for extra early access videos, extra videos, interviews on the patreon i think you got 20 to 25 interviews on that bitch you're all free to come in and talk to me in like a special chat on discord which i'm more active and yeah uh it's not a it's not a must i appreciate you just watching so uh thank you for still watching and drowned good luck editing this video because i stumble a lot through my words um yeah that was it thank you see you next time Bye bye